Hey, what's up, everybody? It is here at Bodies and Wicks. Um, I just wanted to hit play just so I got some of this on record. Um, this is we're watching a Ethereum. Um, and I have the chart Ethereum USD up. Um, I am watching it go through a uh well it went through a five minute um uh breaker i'm watching it come back down to see if it gets to the bottom of the breaker um and if it gets i've i've marked out the the median of the um, breaker um trying to see if it's gonna get any lower or not i should probably get to i should have restarted my computer but oh well uh, i'm gonna go to one minute see if there's any it looks like i took out the liquidity below hit the let's hit the um order block here one minute order block uh, what should be pushing it upwards? Wait till it gets a little bit lower if it can. I'm trying to put another lot on this, or another couple lots. Um, but I'm waiting for it to get to the right price. Okay, there we go. It's still still inside the breaker, about halfway through. All right, there we go. Yeah, it came back down a little bit. I'm still watching it. I, I went hit buy, and then it said enterprise, and I forgot it was on limit to the market, so I still haven't entered. Probably should. Before it. It does something. So the breaker is going to do what it's supposed to do. It should stay in this box or above this box. So, um, I'm sorry I didn't give an intro. This is Ted from Bodies and Wix. What you're doing is uh, watching some smart money trading in real time. Um, so this has to do with uh, breaker blocks. Um, uh, okay, so basically what smart money trading is, is it's not retail. Um, we don't rely on... Uh, trend lines we don't rely on um, you know it, indicators or um, you know channels that's going to tell us your, your you know, it's just channels I, not, not channels that's going to tell us because channels aren't going to tell you anything um, or uh, you know triangles or bull flags or bear flags or or crabs or deep crabs or sharks or uh you know harmonics is basically what i'm referring to um we don't really believe in any of that um believe what we believe is that uh, it and it's the truth whether you want to believe it or not uh there's an algorithm built into the charts um and all you have to do is study enough of it and you'll know the algorithm um and uh, the algorithm basically tries to um well uh, the people with the big money understand it because what it's doing right now is it's kind of building positions to go long um uh but it seeks out liquidity and it looks to balance right and those are the two things that it does um i set my entry for this um earlier today at uh 1896 things it was even though this says 1890 oh yeah that's right because i 
I had an accident all and that is on the one hour so let's check out the four hour four hours a little bit higher So, and just to differentiate, I will put a four next to this one, and same thing with this one. Come on now. I'll put a four just so we know which one's the one and which one's the four hour. So, in between there. Um, even in the four hour, we could have delineated all of this, a, um, breaker, or, or uh, this is actually a mitigation block, uh, mitigation block, uh, basically is, um, you know, a, a candle that let me go to the one hour so I, I can show you exactly what it is. Um, so it goes from low to high and it goes to another low. And then after that, it trades right through it. So as soon as it trades through it, it becomes a mitigation block. If it doesn't trade through it, it doesn't become a mitigation block. It's just another candle. So, um, and, but then since we have such a huge, you know, fair value gap here, um, my eyes have been set on this area, um, for quite some time, um, for it to return to. So, um, and right in the middle of it, let me get to what I'm trying to show you is this so there you go you have the lows here right comes up this is your highest candle right your highest candle in the i guess uh framework here um down to what it's not a low low but it goes lower so that block right there um is considered your uh, breaker block and again it doesn't become a breaker block until it is traded through and so it is traded through um, it doesn't come back down and touch it it hasn't been touched since today until about a couple hours ago um, but uh, it was earlier today that when I saw it was coming close that I did put my um, my uh, uh, limit on it at uh, 18 and I had I didn't have the magnetic thing on it so it was a little bit wider than what it should have been so it was at 1896 instead of whatever price this is um, 1892 78 that would have been the entry for me uh, I always draw out the median um, see if it's going to cross the median or not um, if it crosses the median then I usually wait to see if it gets to the bottom um, and then I'll, uh, I'll enter there I'll add another position there as well uh, kind of as a hedge um, but you know I will put my stop loss at the very bottom of this block because if this block is what it's supposed to do um, for this time being um, it will uh, stay above here and so far it has so and now that we've uh, broken that down from the hour we can get down into the five minute of it um, and since the five minute of it there has been a, another uh, block uh, breaker block or sorry um, mitigation block um, as you can see, it made a low. I mean, and this just goes from candle to candle. So it has a low here, or you can go from this low if you want to. Low. Um, and I may have to do this on a 15 minute because 
I don't know. We'll just have to watch and see. Because if I'm doing the five minute, if it goes from low, we take this as a high, goes down to this low, then. Well, uh, never mind. That doesn't make sense because this this whole block is actually lower. And it should have traded below here. So I actually, this is a good example of uh, when you don't read things right and uh, you accidentally do the wrong thing. So um, this is not a mitigation block um, because it hasn't gotten lower than this five minute candle here so this is going to be interesting um yeah I'll, I'll admit my faults i didn't read that correctly uh, if i go to a 15 minute though still not because this could be well it could be forming one, but we would need this to get below. Well, we would actually need this to get below here and then trade above it for it to be a mitigation block. So right now, all right, so because right now it is just a candle. And uh, like I said, in the one minute, um, there was a bearish order block that uh, basically stopped it from entering the five minute fair value gap. But like I said, these fair value gaps um, do act as uh, you know, magnets basically. So that is what is drawing it toward this um, as liquidity. Um, I do expect it to get inside here. Um, and then you know back out and then push through um how long is that going to take it could take all night to be honest um but i at least i did get in at a good position um the second position i took in here um luckily it wasn't as big of a position as it was here <laughs> so that i'm happy i also did um it was only a small position so uh, but uh it should not it hopefully it should not break this low before breaking this high right and what i'm looking for i'm looking for at least for it to break these highs here I would like to go higher, yes, and probably break this one. But I'm going to aim for these because you have these two candles right here. These two candles barely have any wicks. Um, so this tells me these are basically institutionalized candles um, or algorithmic candles or whatever you want to call them. Um, because if there's, I don't know, dude, just because there's no work on it. If there's a huge solid body, I mean, this is basically a, a Marabozu candle, right? A uh, Marabozu candle going, uh, a bearish Marabozu candle. Um, these are usually um, candles that you like to see um, whenever you're in some kind of uh, institutional trade. Um, especially if it gives you equal highs, because that tells you that there's liquidity being engineered right above it. So there could be buy stops resting right above these guys, right? And so I want it to cross this, and this is going to be my, uh, my target, right? So, uh... And if it is my target, uh, do a little hypothetical here, 1896. Kind of jumping around because my computer, all right, 189607, we're close enough. Let's 
I got in this area about two percent uh fifty three dollars um and with 5x leverage that i have right now and the way it's moving um would give me about uh well i'm not going to discuss that but uh it would give me quite a bit of money let's just say i'm in a good good uh green area right now on this trade we'll, we'll just say that so that's what i'm looking for um what i can also do to illustrate this is put in a long position um, put it over in here close enough and let's see what kind of risk to reward ratio we have on this um Right now, I don't know what I just moved, but I moved something. And I hit back and it goes away. Did I? There we go. Okay. Um, stop. It's going to be right here. Or actually, I should probably go a little bit below. Uh, so that is about a two to one usually one about a three to one but i'll take a two to one um and as the higher it goes um i'll probably move my stop loss as well um as i also take profits because i probably will be taking the portion off as soon as i enter the five minutes not much but you know, a little bit off just to pay myself, just in case it does into the five minute gap and go backwards on us. Which it shouldn't, I mean, it'll retrace, but I'm hoping it doesn't go backwards and go back below the breaker. As you can see, as the fair value gaps here, here's the one hour, here's the four hour. It may actually get up and break this liquidity here as, you know, it approaches the four hour fair value gap uh, because we cut through candles. We don't, that's another thing about smart money. Um, it's not like supply and demand where if you run into a cluster of, of, of candles that, you know, it's said and done with. No, the algorithm uh, will remember everything um, moving forward for quite some time. Uh, so we cut through candles. It's just as simple as that. Now, here's something interesting. If, if this candle does trade above here, right, um, then we do have another uh, mitigation block. But it's got to trade above it and stay above it. But if it just breaks it with the wick and comes back down, then you don't. And I'm trying to think of some other things to talk about, to look at while we're sitting here watching this example unfold. Um, here we have a 15 minute um, fair value gap also entering in the charts just rhyming look at that 
it's right at probably where I want it to um, take most of the profits. I'll probably take most of the profits off at that area. Um, now I'll leave a little bit on behind, you know, I'll leave a little bit on to see if we can keep it going up. Um, of course, make sure my, my stop loss is raised above um, the entry, uh, the way I'm not losing anything. And uh, we'll see what's going to happen from here. Um, I am on the 15 minute. I do want to get to the one minute to see what is happening. To see if we can guess how this is going to act as we move forward. Uh, Okay. Looks like we had a big fair value gap here. Already got filled. Or as I hit something that moves it. I just need to lock that. Alright. Um, comes up, stops here. Looks like there may have been a little bit. Well, looks like it was this guy. What? Was it this guy? Could have been, could have been this, uh, this candle that reached up here, acted as a uh, bearish order block because it is the last up candle um, before going before going back down. So that is what constitutes, and also the red candle does break the threshold, the low threshold of the great the the bullish candle so that does constitute it as a bearish order block so that is what it is probably causing this stoppage right here is that this is a bearish order block right now and yes we're cutting through candles and you're saying, well, what about those other candles? How come those other candles didn't stop? Well, the bearish order block, the whole bearish candle is basically the um, resistance zone. So as long as it doesn't get above it, then it's still a valid um bearish order block unfortunately so uh, we don't want right now we don't want it to be a bearish order block that we need to trade through it somehow um ooh. oh 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 i think i see it now we do have a new breaker or not a new breaker um mitigation block so it's gonna be this guy right here this candle Because we do have a low, a high. Looks like it breaks. Yep. It does break the high of all those candles. And then it gets traded through. So it gets traded through and comes back, bounces, comes back up. It's a very shorter block. Now we're inside the breaker again. It should, hopefully, should not across the bottom of this this uh, box um if we could put another um another position on here if we wanted to um considering it did cause a bullish uh order block right here
because this candle came down you have these two green candles that overtake it just like this one was the remember how this one was the lowest one or how this one was the highest one and then this one uh, came down overtook it right so that's what claimed it as a bearish order block or as this candle as the bearish order block because this is the highest candle cut this comes down and breaks that low all right so same thing happens here comes up this thing goes low these two candles basically act as one breaking that high now this is a bullish order block and it shouldn't get any lower one first as low as the box to lower than the candle which is about the same thing and even then you have kind of another one here The, the big wicks on it sometimes make it hard to guess, but they still they still act in the same way. So you could have a bullish order block, and I'm I'm sure that's what this is. This is definitely a bullish order block, and that's why it hasn't came lower than this low here. Uh, so these two candles come down these three candles fourth candle um all come above break the high of this making this a bullish order block so if we wanted to i could draw another line all the way across illustrating that oh it well okay so it did break did break below the breaker broke below that order block however the main order block that i am pointing out is still intact so let's see if it gets below that It very well possibly could. It looks like this uh, bear shorter block um, has imposed some power on this one. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if it just tries to make a spike down here, really, or a spike like it just did to take out the liquidity underneath here and then move forward. I mean, that's not uncommon for uh, in smart money in an order block just because people think this is a safe support, right? So people would put their their stop loss here. Um, and even though it is an order of block, it could come to the bottom of it, spike through it, and then look at that. Now you're seeing what we want to see. So I am going to get rid of this. I'm trying to think if there's another level that it's looking for that could be below or it could have some liquidity hiding below it. 
Um, which would be this guy right here. So this would be your sell side liquidity here. I'm just not for sure if it's going to reach it. Man, my computer is being super slow. Boom, went down. You can see that. That was for all the people that were having a very, very, very tight stop loss. Went down, broke through real quick. Punches back up again. Now I want to see some, especially since it contracted. You see these contraction candles getting smaller and smaller now we want to see some movement to the upside Then I may have to speed this video up. Who knows? I mean, this has basically formed a order block anyway, so it's going back down into the order block, rebalancing. Uh, and again, hopefully, we'll see some more push to the upside. Interesting that it's uh, you know, just kind of stalling right here. I mean, we do have this small one minute fair value gap right here reached up into it oh it's hit it okay could be that we're seeing a the effects of a uh, bearish breaker right now which I just noticed we got the high here yeah we're coming down up low then high again so you have bearish breaker coming across And so now that it's coming up inside of that, even though it should be bullish and it's trying to be bullish, 
but there is a bearish breaker. Unlock that. So we're going to see some more movement out of this. So the thing is that I mean it it, it might seek lower. Yeah, it, it might seek lower to try to get to the sell side liquidity here. Um, and even then, we could be looking at it trying to get to. Uh, this little fair value gap right here. So lock this up. Yeah, it's going for that sell side liquidity now. And it's going to make people think that, okay, there is a sell side liquidity or not, basically not sell side liquidity, but um, a support level here. So it would make people try to buy. There it goes. Goes to the sell side liquidity level. It'll probably pull back up. Maybe not. It's going straight for the fair value gap. Boom. Touches it. That's what you want to see in a bullish condition. Is it touch it and then move on from there let's see if it actually moves on from there though if it actually wants to get inside of this well let's see if it's touched it we are on magnetic okay goes inside for a value gap oh wow okay it's going through now it is hitting a bullish order block but it ran through the fair value gap so that balances this whole apparatus out and we could see it come back down to 1893 But that's one thing that does happen with fair value gaps that I've noticed, especially once if it enters them, if it gets close to them and it backs away from them, um, it's not going to be a couple candles later and then just jump through it. Uh, it's probably going to back away a good, good sized area like it has here. You know, it came back, pulled up, and pulled back again before we see some bullish action. But I do believe
now that it has pulled through the fair value gap um and it got more than three quarters of the way through the bullish order block actually i actually came down here this is actually a propulsion block it was this bullish order block well it didn't click when i thought it did i wonder if it touched on that almost exactly let's see what the coordinates here are 1894.96, what's the low here? 1895.10, less than a pip away. Well, less than, wait, 1.6 pips away. Coming back through it. I'm going to back out of the fire, the one minute to the five. And then, then considering this is also a bullish order block, I'm going to measure this. It did, it did break that high. And I want to see the median of this five minute order block. 1890, one I think I created an extra one on accident and I am in the hour so let me look at this over here because I have a feeling this is where it's going to be coming uh, either to try to fulfill the four hour fair, fair value gap here um, which would also be a bullish order block start or to fill in this fair value gap here and if i really wanted to get low it could try to get down to this fair value gap right here and then get into this order block and then below that i believe this is a either a weekly or a daily order block i can't remember no not a weekly I think it's another four hour order block, if I'm not mistaken. Hello. Or it could be Yeah, it looks like I tried to make it a uh, uh would be yeah another mitigation block because you would have well high well, high no 
No, that wouldn't be a mitigation block at all. The mitigation block would be your last down candle. It could be that sense, but that would be within an hour context. But it doesn't trade below it, so it doesn't make it a mitigation block. I do know why this is here. Um, it looks like there is a very tiny opening. Instead of a huge opening, that would it look like for a one hour fair value gap going through here. Let me label these so I don't get lost. Four hour. No, it doesn't need to move. Yeah, this was the one hour fair value gap. Go ahead and mark that. G fair value gap. Um, if you're in a short, that's bad news because you want to see it usually hit that fair value gap and then bounce out, um, almost immediately. Um, As you can see, it's continuing to push higher. Um, but it has yet to hit. The. Uh, this mitigation block okay here we go hit the mitigation block what we could see is we could see the opposite happen of what we just did see happen we could see it come up to the top of here and then bounce back or we could see this just trade right through That's the only thing with price action. You just kind of have to take a look at what is happening. And hope you're on the right track. I'm lucky I'm still in this, to be honest. And unfortunately, this might be it is getting late for me. Um, I wish I could sit here and do this all night with you guys, but uh, we will pick this back up tomorrow and see what happens with this. So um, I won't upload this video tonight. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow with uh, part two. Actually, I may upload this video tonight. Yeah, I'll go ahead and upload this video tonight. 
Um, and, uh, Sorry, I'm still watching here. Anyways, let's just say if you learned anything um, new tonight, um, just from following along with my price action, um, what I want you to do, you see it on the screen, hit that subscribe button, uh, hit that like button, hit that notification button. Um, I can teach you more about smart money and the way it's going to move and what's possibly going to happen um like i said unfortunately this didn't go exactly how i went or how i wanted it to but i you know there was a lot of things in here i did see coming um some things i didn't um again still learning um but uh you know smart money um is a process to learn um and you have to think like the banksters you have to think like the big money people um to really understand and to 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 really get it in, on a larger level um so um i'll go ahead and upload this tonight and uh we'll see what happens with parts tomorrow we'll see if i get knocked out um because uh i mean i got let's see here well i had Position. I have two positions. I, I'm 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 under one of the positions right now. Right now, well, under two of the positions, uh, but I'm above one of the positions. So I'm kind of at about even right now, to be honest. Um, just because my entry was here, but I also have another entry here, um, but I also put a small position in here. So uh, kind of about even. Um, just a little bit below, not too much, um, but uh, we'll see what happens, um, and uh, I'll let you all know tomorrow. Well, I, I sit here and I go, here, here, you here, here um, when I should actually show you on the charts, right? So, uh, uh, you know, I entered uh, exactly where the, uh, the red line is, uh, 1864, um, took another position, um, in here, it was right around 1868, um, and then I have a small, small position right around in here, um, probably at the bottom of this around 1909-1910. So uh, again, right about equal. Um, as it's going down, it looks like I'm going into the negative a little bit, but then again, uh, a lot of things can happen between now and then. Uh, like I said, it's pushing up into that, uh, the, uh, mitigation block here. Um, but it could turn around and easily, um, you know, break through it as well. Uh, unfortunately, if I'm sleeping, I won't be able to, well, well, I guess I could, I don't know. I'll have to try to see if I can get it to take a partial position off here and then uh aim for the main position up there so uh again uh thanks a lot for watching uh this is ted and here again with bodies and wicks and we will see y'all tomorrow uh happy trading and uh happy hum day hum day's tomorrow huh cool all right well since it's hump day <laughs> always remember to keep your pants on <laughs>